What's good, village? This is Blackleaf here. Welcome back to another reaction to Casual Geographics. This is the third reaction, and I apologize if this is a little bit late, but hey, it's up. <laughs> it's going up, so that's what's important. But yeah, if you like today's video, definitely like it and leave a comment. And tell me what you guys think of Casual Geographics, just in general. Uh, tell me the, the part you end up liking most about this video today. Um, today's video is actually going to be the biggest mistake a lion can make. That is a... All I see is a picture of a hippo and I already know it's going to be a lot of issues. So it's, it's just going to be a lot of issues. I also meant to full screen this. Yikes. Anyway, so um, super quick. Um, I apologize. This is late. Um, basically, that hurricane that happened, Ida, 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 whichever it was called, it flooded the basement like three inches of water. So <laughs> that was not freaking fun. I was so exhausted working, trying to keep the flood minimized as even humanly possible that thursday uh i was just exhausted and i still tried to go to work and it was just still a lot of work and cleaning to be done because the flood exited the basement it has been hell this week let's just say that so finally we're gonna have a chance to do some recording so i see you guys really really enjoy the casual geographics i love learning about animals and i did hear about um one commenter i'm gonna try to put their name up here as well they told me to actually check out um tier zoo if I'm not mistaken, that's what it's called. So I'm gonna actually try to check out some of those videos too. So definitely let me know um, if there's any other videos relating to like animals, things like that y'all want me to react to, or just any other fun content. Um, as far as those that are a fan of Ruby that have been part of the channel, uh, Ruby review should be out around the end of the month. I know I talked about that a billion times, but it should actually be out at the end of the month. Like there's not really much else blocking it this time. I've had a billion things block it. Nothing should block it this time coming around. And not only that, but um, in general, Ruby did get delayed until 2022. So I also want to make like a mini video on that and just basically go forward from there. So yeah, enough talking. Let's just get straight into the video. It's been long enough. So five, four, three, two, one. Hmm. You know what? Before I tell you, I'm just going to show you. Let me explain every way that lion has f***ed up. The average male murder horse can tip the scales at 3,500 to 5,000 pounds. But the biggest ones can come in at 9,000 pounds. Or 4,082 kilograms for the non-Americans watching this. Hippos have a bite force of close to 2,000 pounds, strong enough to divide a crocodile in half. That is not an exaggeration, it's actually happened. And hippos are one of the most homicidal things to ever have a heartbeat. And for something that most people think is a vegetarian, I've seen them take antelopes off the census for no reason other than malicious intent. Rarely each Not other? Not every year they turn at least 500 people into a tiny section in a newspaper. Put it all together and you get a freight truck with an overbite and roid rage that can literally outrun Usain freaking Bolt and turn Simba into an orphan even faster. The only times you'll ever see a lion run a fade with a hippo is if the lion is starving and desperate or if the hippo is injured, sick, or a light breeze away from becoming just a body. Other than that, a lion wanting smoke with a literal tank with teeth is just a Hannah Baker mission. Also, graphic warning, if you have a sensitive stomach, this is your cue to hide in the comments. This lion tried to test a hippo's hood and got her jaw snatched instead. And if you're a lion and you hunt other animals for a living, getting crippled by a hippo means you can go ahead and start house hunting for grades because if you can't hunt, it's really up for you. It, it, it's curtains. Love this video. Hippos are like STDs. Nobody should be f***ing with them. Oh, I'm officially... Oh, that's loud. You know, that actually reminded me of a really messed up fact. You know the leopard seal, right? The op of happy feet? The biggest threat to a penguin's way of life. Ask them where they want to eat, they'll say Popeyes. Yes, they eat penguins, but we already knew that. But you want to know what else they eat? You'll never guess it. People? Seriously, I'll give you time to comment, but you won't get it. Apparently, leopard seals have been known to hunt and eat platypus. Yeah, the ones in Australia have been recorded catching and murdering platypus. Catching parries. Yeah, that is a crossover I am just not ready to deal with right now. <laughs> Honestly, it's bad enough that this is probably the first time a lot of people are hearing that this thing's found in Australia. Some of these steroid seals end up wandering all the way up to Tasmania and Heron Island, which is an island in the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef, which is how the leopard seal can end up in the same area code as this duck rabbit. Also, they can grow to 12 <laughs> feet long, weigh 1,300 pounds, or one ended a person's life after mauling her and dragging her underwater. Leopard seals are a menace that nobody has the balls to really acknowledge. That wasn't edited. That's really what they sound like. This is a munjack, but for obvious reasons, most people know it as the barking deer. This barking bambi is found in Asia in countries like India, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and the forests of Indonesian Why Island. is his head like Munjacks that? scream when they're scared or to tell other deer where they are in case they lose them in a dense forest. Like if you lost your mom at a store and just screamed like a banshee until she found you. 
They'll also <laughs> stomp on the ground while <laughs> guarding in order to look more intimidating, which, you know, probably would work if they weren't like two feet tall. But like any vertically challenged person, they overcompensate and this deer will cut you. Munjax thing, sharp enough to shank anybody who underestimates just what a deer with short person complex can do. They've even been known to run fades with dogs and send them to the vet. Also, like surprisingly most deer, the Munjack isn't a herbivore. They'll eat grasses, herbs, and berries, but they'll also hunt and eat small animals and bird eggs. Also, fun fact, actually really, I don't know how the this is possible fact, Munjack has less chromosomes than a fruit fly, with males having 7 and females having only 6. Friendly reminder, we have 46. So, we have a 2 foot tall vampire of a deer that barks like Clifford, has less chromosomes than a fly, and the same attitude as any girl under 5 feet. This <laughs> is nature's drunk text. This bird has a penis for a tongue, and I'm not even kidding. And it's all because of the way they eat. Why did you filter out algae and why did you start it like that? Why is that the start? How is that the start? Why is that the start? His tongue is his His tongue is his penis. All right, I, I need to hear this one. There's uh, a lot of dirty jokes to get out of that one. <laughs> All right, let's hear this shit. The water and they do it upside down. They use their tongue to squeeze out the water and trap the food. But we found out while they do that, a bunch of erectile tissue in its mouth fills with blood and stiffens just like, well, you know. And apparently being bricked up in the mouth helps the flamingo keep its head stable as it sticks its beak in the water and eats upside down. All that erectile tissue <laughs> sits at the bottom of its mouth and runs down both sides of its tongue. So whenever a flamingo eats, on command, the blood rushes to the tissue and anchors the bird's head. It also makes the tongue harder than a man watching an Olympic long jump compilation on YouTube. We've all gotten those recommendeds, and we've all clicked on them. Moral. I'm mad this bird is bricked up, and it's a mouth. <laughs> it's a mouth that's bricked up. And I hate that. this video. Flamingos are really f***ing weird. Also, those aren't its knees. It's bending its ankles. There used to be a nearly 20 foot bulletproof serial Ow. killer whose victims included humans and hippos. Gustav was a Nile crocodile from Burundi and scientists estimated <laughs> that he was now. over 18 feet long and weighed well over 2,000 pounds. And with a bite force of 3,700 pounds, getting attacked by him was like getting assaulted by a sledgehammer with teeth. Because Gustav was too big to hunt the usual victims like zebra and antelope, he instead put wildebeest and yes, even hippos on t-shirts. He also liked to resort to cannibalism if he was ever low on groceries. And he didn't stop there, because this overgrown Bundy gecko allegedly had a body count of about Bundy 300 gecko. people. And apparently Gustav Fucking was amazing. to the pieces and not even eat the mutilated corpse. Bro was a real life stat patty. And wouldn't you know, the bastard was bulletproof, since one of Gustav's defining traits was that he had three bullet scars on his body. But the scariest thing about him is how he would have gone about taking your life. Like all crocodiles and alligators, Gustav would have slowly creeped on you in the water with only his eyes visible. The rest of his body would be hidden in the murky water. Then he would have slammed his jaws on you with the force of a car, strong enough to tear muscle and break bone. And at this point, you'd be 50 shades of Yeah. With about 60 teeth buried into your flesh. Two that was the last Gustav time. You underwater and death rolled you. And how long you lived would depend on where he got you. If he managed to get a hold of your arm, he would have effectively ripped it right out of the socket. If he got your Oh, I remember that video from Gustav, years ago. If he didn't straight up drown, you would have bled out. And if you messed around and let him grab your neck, he would have barrel rolled your head off. Remember how I said he turned 300 people into hashtag? Considering how violently crocodiles kill their prey, it could be more, we just haven't found the bodies yet. Scientist Patrice Faye spent months trying to capture him, but somehow a nearly 20 foot assault weapon managed to avoid them every time. Gustav allegedly died in 2019, but we don't know how, why, or who did it, and we don't know how many lives he took with him. Here's a fact you didn't know you needed to hear. Oh my Some god. Some octopus will carry around a security coconut to use as extra protection. Octopus are one of the smartest things in the ocean, and some have the intelligence of a three-year-old human. It's high-key crazy to think about, but they have no shell or armor, so some species will carry around two halves of a coconut to use as a travel-sized panic room to avoid predators or social interaction in general. This octopus has <laughs> nothing, yet somehow I completely understand. Some will even <laughs> camp inside coconuts just so they can catch crabs slipping. Yo! So crabs really do be getting hoed by everyone. Might Yo! Be us, but that's low-key a messed up way to die. Coconuts aren't the only tool for <laughs> just go like this. to use. I remember this guy. That is the highly venomous man of war, which is toxic enough to put both fish and people in a pack. Which is why the Let's not with the man of war. The venomous tentacles of the man of war to use as like a melee weapon to defend themselves. You no, know, if octopus lived longer than a year or two, they could probably do a lot of damage. Moral of this video: If you ever see an octopus carrying coconuts like it's luggage, you know why. You no, know, we probably should be scared of how smart these guys are. This is Inky the octopus, and he used to live in an aquarium in New Zealand. And I say used to because Inky actually escaped by slipping out of his tank when no one was looking. Apparently, How? He a small gap at the top of his tank and Shawshanked his way out. Then he <laughs> slithered across the floor until he found a six inch drain hole, which he, of course, managed to squeeze through. Fun fact octopus have no bones or swim bladders, meaning a 600 pound octopus can fit through an opening the size of a quarter. 
What the f- Yo, do y'all- Can y'all imagine if an octopus just decided they wanted to run into houses instead? They could literally just go through pipes inside sewers and toilets and everything just pop up. They could fit in there. They could actually fit in there. That's insane. That's really, really crazy. But octopus ain't trying to do that because they're smart. I imagine. That's almost half the length of a football field until he reached the ocean. And nobody ever saw him again. The next day, workers noticed that the octopus was missing, and I like to think it went something like this. Only reason they even found out what happened was because Inky left a trail leading to the drain pipe, but when they searched it, he was gone. Bro watched that one scene from Finding Nemo and decided he had enough of the gimmicks. Now, I'm not saying we should be afraid of them. But you can't tell me to say some E.T. Sh I can personally guarantee you're not ready for how big this animal actually is. That is an Aldabra giant tortoise. The Aldabra part is because they're only found on islands on the Aldabra Atoll in Seychelles off the east that coast of Africa. That thing is a Africa. gargantuan. because they're built like a freight train with legs. But yeah. These ones weigh well over 500 pounds and some wander into the neighborhood of my 600 pound life. This breathing tank eats mostly grasses, leaves, and woody plant stems. They've also been known to feed on the corpses of other dead tortoises because of course they do. So what the fuck? Some learning how to catch and eat birds like the lesser naughty. To be fair, if you can literally fly but get game over by a boulder with cankles, you kind of deserve it. This overgrown shell jockey is such a powerhouse that they basically have the same job as elephants. Because while looking for food, Aldabra tortoises will often knock over small trees and shrubs, creating pathways for small animals the same way elephants do. Also, they basically never die. The oldest one was a tortoise named Adweda, who allegedly lived to 255 years old. Oh also, my Adweda god. He was born in 1750, but nobody knows for sure because he just kept outliving the people taking care of him. <laughs> Which means he was alive to witness some of the worst events in human history and said nothing, because if minding your business was a person, this would be his profile picture. A lot of y'all want to know how I know so much about animals and why I care so much, so in honor of us hitting 10 million, here's 10 reasons why I am the way I am. For one, zoo hmm. books. And these kids might remember this commercial. I remember them. Yeah, I had them all. No, seriously. <laughs> call me Shout out. I really did catch them all. And fun fact, that I had a couple was of the them. first one I ever got. I had a couple of them, figure. but I, I don't remember which one. This show was basically my Bible because I watched it. Dude, yes, it was. This is why I love this channel so much. I literally used to watch this show all the goddamn time. The most extreme. That's why I know the little facts like... Cats are the most domestic, domesticated animals that are like the most, like an infinite amount of in a planet. Like that, that's why I know little things like that. Cause it, this show taught it to me. That's why I'm scared of certain fucking snakes and insects. Cause they have like venom that freaking spits up and kills like 25 people. I know because of this show, I know that flies technically kill like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people technically a year because they literally defecate in food. That are so toxic that it actually could kill a person. So that's why also I don't eat my food if a fly touches it. Like if a fly legit taps it, I don't eat the food at all. Like I'm just done. So yeah, th this show taught me that. Religiously. I wasn't allowed to watch TV on weekdays, but since this was technically educational, I could get away with it. And if you watch this show and watch my videos, you can definitely see where I get a lot of it from. Exactly. The first game that's why I, I loved it. Basically, you just build a zoo, and for some reason, five-year-old me couldn't get enough of it. I also used to set the lions free and then watch them violate the guests, so yeah. I might have been a psychopath at one point. <laughs> yeah. Number four, I think I was like seven when I got this book. I had like hundreds of animal books, but for some reason, this one was my favorite. I actually lost it for like a year and a half in somebody's house in another state, and my seven-year-old mind did not know peace until I got it back. Number five, this thing. I wonder if it still works. I think I had that too. I had something like that too. I was wildly into animals when I was younger too. And then I stopped and then I recently got back into loving animals all over. you're a vet treating animals in a zoo and I would honestly spend hours doing it. I couldn't tell my left from right, but I could tell you how to check for tuberculosis in a camel or how to treat diarrhea in a chimp. Number seven, y'all already know who this is. Number eight, I also got National Geographics for kids that I would get every month. Number nine, I once went to the Bronx Zoo when I was four and when I came back home, I told my mom I wanted to be a zookeeper when I grew up. And number 10, I really don't know. <laughs> like, I didn't like animals because I had all those things. I had all those things because I already liked animals. I don't know where it came from. Like, I would make these little animal books full of drawings when I was three years old, and I have no idea what made me do it. I think I was just a weird-ass kid, and some things just don't change. Thank you all for 10 million. I hope all your pillows are cold at night. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so legit, I loved every minute of that.
And yeah, like the most extreme was something I watched religiously every day after school, every single day, because it came on at like four o'clock or five o'clock my time. And I would just watch it constantly, every day. Uh, well, it usually wasn't on a weekend, so that's it was a random time, but literally on weekdays, that was my drug. A full hour, just the most extreme. That show, and I'm looking up because it's like a freaking buff line. The one I almost I don't like. But, <laughs> but yo, for real though, I, that was amazing, and good to know that that's what that's good to know that's what it's based on. Good to know that's what all of that is based on. So um yeah, guys, so that's gonna be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out. Um, there should be more videos coming out within a week. Invincible should be finished up by the end of September or early October, close to my birthday. And um, after Invincible is done, we'll find another series. Um, I was trying to think of what other series show based that I will probably get into. So that's one thing I'm gonna try to check out. Um, I did say I wanted to rewatch Genlock because Genlock season two is coming out soon. So that's one of the things I've also been contemplating, but I'm not gonna waste too much time on this video. This is about hood nature and nature videos. There's more stuff coming. Every week there's gonna be a hood nature video or at least some other animal based video because I've been strongly enjoying them as well. So guys, thank you so much again for watching in the village. I will see y'all next time. And remember, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and to follow all the social medias that were popping up just a second ago. See y'all then and thank you again.